casualty numbers are now set to lie at 174 killed and over 1,100 wounded. All indications are, and I find this particularly dramatic, that women and children make up a sizable number of victims of the current strikes. What? Currently, more than one quarter of the fatalities are children. Israel has promised to press the fight against Hamas. The death toll is closing in on the 200 mark. The United Nations calling for peace. And there is debate on whether or not Israel should, in the minds of some, finish the job with regard to the terrorist organization Hamas. Now for some explanation. Welcome into Midpoint, the senior research fellow for Middle Eastern Affairs at the Heritage Foundation, James Phillips, joins us today. Mr. Phillips, thanks for being here. Well, thank you. Looking at what has gone on in the Middle East, in that section of the Middle East, because there has been 2008, 2009, Israel went against Hamas there. They did it again in 2012, now in 2014 again. Benjamin Netanyahu says he will not back off. There will not be discussion of peace or a cessation of any of the missile firings against Hamas. It does seem to some as if it's, a, it's different this time around, that there is that desire to finish the job. Do you get that sense from what we're seeing here in the last couple of days? I think the Israeli government is projecting that sense that it's willing and able to go in on the ground, but I don't think it really wants to go in on the ground because it knows that not only would the cost in terms of Israeli casualties be a lot higher, but the cost in terms of Palestinian casualties are, would be much higher. Uh, and I think there are two differences uh, this time around uh, from the last two Gaza wars. Uh, one is that uh, Hamas, unfortunately, has acquired mo uh, more dangerous and more long-range missiles from Iran that now are willing, uh, that are able to reach uh, Jerusalem and Tel Aviv. Uh, but secondly, this time Egypt is taking a much more strongly anti-Hamas position and has closed the smuggling tunnels, so that will limit Hamas's ability to, to rearm going forward. The rearming is something I wanted to discuss because in Israel it is it is called mowing the lawn, the cycle where they, they have a temporary disruption of Hamas's ability and will to fire rockets. They have done this before. What is making Israel believe that this time out they actually have a, a real opportunity to maybe not stop things but at least slow them down to where it's not coming back at them every year or two years? Well, I think uh, the ace up their sleeves is the fact that they have much closer security cooperation with Egypt after the ouster of the Muslim Brotherhood government uh, in Cairo uh, in July 2013. Now they know that uh, whatever Hamas uh, targets they hit this time will be much harder for Hamas to, uh, to resupply and recreate. Uh, and that means uh, the longer this air offensive goes on, the more long-range missiles they can destroy, the less of a threat Hamas and other uh, Islamist extremist groups will be able to pose uh, going forward. What does it mean militarily and strategically now that we hear that Israel has shot down a drone? And this is the first time we've heard about this, that Hamas has drones. They're getting them from somewhere. How does this step up the conflict? It's believed they're getting these drones from uh, Iran. Iran uh, has uh, built a wide variety of drones, including armed drones, although it's not clear that this particular one was armed. Uh, Iran also has given drones to Hezbollah, and Hezbollah, on at least one occasion, f flew a drone over the Israeli nuclear re reactor at Dimona and, in order to send a signal that if if there was a future clash between Hezbollah and Israel, that Hezbollah would be shooting for that uh, facility. Um, th it's believed the Palestinians uh, acquired the parts from Iran and uh, put it together uh, inside uh, Gaza. So there could be more drones coming out of Gaza in the future. How much, in your opinion, will it affect Israel's decision moving forward now that we are hearing more and more about the strikes into the Gaza Strip, where we're seeing 1,700, I believe, or at least 70 percent of the people who are killed thus far are civilians? And that has to sit 
badly, not just with Israel, but doesn't it sit badly with the international community here because you now have Hamas and the Palestinians who are able to paint Israel as someone who is killing the innocents? Yeah, I think Hamas has adopted a very cynical strategy here of hiding among Palestinian civilians while it hurls rockets at Israeli civilians. And then when Israel replies, Hamas turns around and says, oh, isn't that horrible? Palestinian civilians are being killed. But make no mistake, Hamas is the instigator here, and it is using civilians as human shields, which uh, in and of itself is a war crime. Does it, does it catch you a little bit that we're not hearing much about that in the general media? We are he hearing about the fact that 70% of these are civilians, but what you're just telling us right now is not something that is usually reported in a lot of the mainstream media, that it is a human shield issue. That's right. When uh, Hamas uh, finds out that Israel is targeting a certain building, and it finds out because the Israelis actually call people in that building ahead of time and warn them they ha that they have a short period to get out. Hamas has been known to try to uh, uh, mobilize people to stand on the roof of that building. Uh, and that's just one of the, the many ways uh, it uses civilians uh, as shields. Is there any evidence that in this current conflict that they are doing just that? Uh, according to one of the press reports uh, in Gaza, uh, they have done it to at least one building. Uh, and there have been other reports of people getting calls in a building. Uh, uh, in one case, it was the family of a Hamas official, and they got the calls uh, through their cell phones, which shows, I think, that uh, Israel has pretty good intelligence on who is involved uh, in these Hamas attacks. Israel says they will continue to step up the fight as long as there are rockets flying from Palestinian territories into Israel right now. From what you know of it and from your experience being involved in watching a lot of what goes on here, how do you step this down at this point? How do you at least bring some sort of momentary pause to it to see if at least they can help save some of the civilians? I think I'm uh, missing the audio here. Okay, Mr. Phillips, can you hear me? Mr. Phillips, can you hear me? All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and see if we can straighten that out, and we'll see if we can get his audio back with a couple of minutes that we have left here. There is indeed those questions that are being raised right here, because while we talk about what needs to be done and what can be done at this point, there is also a talk about the United States involvement. I'll get to that in just a moment. But there are those who are calling for Israel to step back. Israel says we will not step back as long as we are being fired upon. Hamas says we will not stop firing as long as we are being fired upon. So again, you have the two sides going back and forth. John Kerry is the guy right now who wants to broker a deal. He wants to see if he can put the officials, the experts, both sides together. He wants to see if he can put together the Palestinians, the Israelis, and sit them down. But here we have then what is considered to be uh, the stalemate, if you will. The Israelis and the Palestinians thus far have told John Kerry, we don't want you here. We don't want you to try and negotiate a peace. The U.S. relationship with Egypt and Turkey have deteriorated since 2012. Uh, you heard James Phillips in there talk about the fact that Egypt is now involved with Israel and is all part of this here. The Israelis may indeed feel that at this point they have all they need in order to get this done. Now, Kerry has been in Israel 11 times. He has spent 26 days there since taking office last year. This is all part of the, the ultimately unsuccessful effort to push the Israeli government and the Palestinian Authority into some kind of a peace agreement. It makes no difference who you talk to in the Middle East, though. We have talked to people who are citizens, people who are governmental officials, people who are watching and waiting. Here in America, there are those, and it is a very split, split, organization, a very split group here in America, those who do want the Americans to get involved, those who say, quite frankly, we don't need to get involved at this point. But if you talk to the people in the Middle East, they will say that there is nothing for America to do at this point, that they simply want to take care of what they have, take care of it within their own purview, and they do not need the Americans. Now, at the same time, you have tens of thousands of panicked residents fleeing their homes in the northern Gaza Strip on Sunday when the Israel, uh, Israeli military says they're going to drop bombs. Uh, Mr. Phillips, I only have about 30 seconds left. He is gone. 
Okay, guys. Uh, I was told he was up, but unfortunately he is not there. So we need to take this for what it is and see if indeed there will be somebody, some way in order to step in and in order to try and stop this down. The Israelis say they will not stop. Uh, also, we point out that fact again. 70% thus far of the people that have been killed thus far are civilians. And if what James Phillips told us is correct, that Hamas is putting innocents in harm's way, then certainly Israel is much less to blame for the deaths of civilians than some outlets would have us believe. We'll continue to follow the story. Stay with us right here on the Newsmax TV network. This is Midpoint, where every day, Monday through Friday, makes no difference what the issue is. We will cover it from both sides, and we will question everything.